Hi guys, this is Nia and today I'll be painting another type of button flowers and this time I'll be painting globe amaranths. I found these wildflowers when I was taking a walk and when I searched them on Google, they actually come in an array of pinks and purple colors. So I've decided to paint a bouquet of them so I can include all the different colors. These flowers grow a bit differently. I've seen ones which are quite round in shape with a slight point and ones which are more elongated. Here I've just drawn different silhouettes as examples and they usually have leaves which are quite distinct right under the flowers. For the tiny petals, I'm going to paint them as small curved strokes in rows to help create the round volume of the flowers like such. But you can also practice by drawing out the contour lines first and place the curved strokes on the lines drawn to help you visualize the shape. Now I'm going to draw the motion of how I would paint this and I'm basically going to do longer curved strokes to build up on the shape of the flower and if you want to create the taller flowers you can add additional rows then finish off with the small leaves below the flower and on the stem. Here's a quick example of how I would paint them if I were to paint them neatly so it's a bit clearer for you to see all the strokes. However, when I paint them later on, I choose a looser approach so not all of the lines are as defined. This is up to your preference though if you prefer the neater route or something that is a bit more loose like the one that I'm going to do later. If you prefer to paint with neater strokes though, just make sure to control the water load on your brush so it's not too heavy so it wouldn't create puddles of water, instead it would create really clean lines. For the leaves, I'm just going to create small leaf strokes, making them nice and short, and then finished off with delicate stems. Before we start, I'm just going to list the colors that I'm going to be using. I'm going to use my pencil colors just like I did in my previous video because these, I think, would be easily available for beginners and the colors are quite straightforward. So the first color that I'm going to use is purple, followed by red purple, Naples yellow, which is like a yellowish skin tone, black, and also white. These are the colors that I'm going to use either by themselves or mixed for the flowers. The main colors that I'm going to use for the flowers are basically purples and pinks, but you can mix the colors here and change up the ratio to create different tones, which can give you a nice and harmonious color palette. Here are just some examples of color mixtures that I use. For the purple, I prefer to make it vibrant but muted at the same time, so I added black in the mix. And I'm going to do the same with the red purple. I find that the color looks more natural and richer this way, but you can also use either the purple or the red purple by itself. As for the pink color, I mix Naples yellow with the red purple. But you can also do this with the purple or mix some white with the purple to create a pastel color. For the lighter pastel color, you can also mute it down by adding some black. So these are basically the color mixtures. You can really change up the ratio as you feel suits the painting that you would like to paint. I usually like to start by mixing a few colors on my palette in separate spaces so I can always pick whichever color I'd like to use and have it ready. And here I decided to first use a slightly muted light purple color and I'm going to start by painting in the middle and then building up with more flowers around it. I'm going to leave some space in between each of the flowers first so I can alternate the colors but it's up to you how you would actually like to compose the placement of the different colored flowers. You can either have them bunch together as one color and have another bunch with another color or you can paint something like mine in which I scatter all of the colored flowers so it just creates this random pattern. Here I'm painting quite small with a large brush. You can probably tell that the ratio of my painting here is much smaller than the one that I previously demonstrated and because of this I'm painting with 
a slightly heavier paint load which is natural because bigger brushes if you are painting something small will hold more water which creates a bit more puddling and hence the looser strokes it'll become and those strokes will slightly blend together but this is what I'm actually looking for because I want to actually build up the texture you can still build layer by layer even if you're going for the neater approach but your painting will just have more of a controlled feel but if that's what you're looking for then it's totally fine it's up to you whichever style you want to approach this painting as you can tell here i tried including different shapes but i think in the end i actually prefer the rounder shapes more because i think I am personally drawn to rounder shapes because I think it looks cuter but you can also try different variations of painting the more elongated shapes together or mix both like mine. I just think that if I were to play with the shapes it would be better if I choose more of similar tones so there is not too much distraction. As I'm painting I also like to start with a light consistency where the paint is very watery and while the paint is still wet I like to take a thicker consistency of the same color and place it at the bottom part of the flower letting the paint naturally spread across if you're going to follow the same method as this though I would recommend to make sure that the paint is only slightly damp instead of it being overly wet so the paint doesn't spread as fast so it does take some getting used to if your paint spread too much because the surface is puddling don't panic you can just take a clean tissue or paper towel and dab the excess paint off but leave the surface completely dry first before piling on more paint because chances are that that part of the paper has already absorbed some of the water so if you put more paint on top of that wet paper it's just going to spread out more When I'm painting, I like to start with the lighter colors, whether it be pinks, purples, or any of the pastel colors, and painting them close together but not exactly overlapping at first. That's because I want to build up the value with the darker purple tones, which I'm going to paint behind them, and this will give the illusion of depth because the lighter colors at the front will pop out more as the darker colors are placed right next to it, contrasting the value. I like to do this a section at a time just so I can rethink the composition sometimes. So I like to come back to the lighter tones, then building up the darker tones behind it. Be mindful though if you want to paint the darker tones that you leave out some spaces for stems. This is the mistake that I accidentally made for one of the flowers on the left but I don't think it looks too obvious because it is a small space that I can fix with a little bit of white gouache. So as an option, you can actually paint the stems and leaves before painting the darker flowers at the back. But the reason why I prefer to not do that is so the placement of the flowers look more full and lush. And I just try to make sure that either the bottom of the flower is already covered by another flower in front or to leave a little bit of space at the bottom center of each of the flowers. Like here for the flowers at the side, I want to not be as full as the center of the bouquet. So I start to paint some of the leaves, but you can always go back to painting more flowers whenever you need to. I forgot to also mention that I used a mixture of sky blue, yellow, and purple for the green, but you can use any tone of green that you have on your palette. Here I'm just building up on the shape of the bouquet. I tried to make them look round, but still slightly uneven, and I tried to also alternate the position of the leaves so each flower looked different. When you're painting the stems though, try to point it towards the center because if you're following this composition, I'm actually going to punch them together. So if the stem is facing straight down and the bottom becomes really wide, you won't be able to turn it into a bouquet that is bunched together. 
Here I'm going to add more definition to the texture of the flowers by using a medium consistency of the same mixtures from before and using my smallest brush to paint some strokes in random sections of the flower. Then I'm going to continue on to also add more flowers to complete the overall bouquet and once I'm done I'm going to paint the leaves and stems and for the stems I decided to first use a medium consistency of green for a few main stems but as I build up on more layers I also use a darker tone of green to include different values in the painting so the bouquet doesn't look too flat. But as I paint the stems and leaves, I try to first make them quite short and bunch together because I'm going to continue with the rope before adding the rest of the stems below it. I'm also using my small fine detail brush here to make sure that the lines I create for the stems and rope to be nice and delicate. For the leaves, I also try to alternate the size as well as the angles so everything stays nice and natural. And I think that is the key to painting flowers, is to keep everything varied instead of it looking the same. For the rope, I decide to use a light brown color by adding a bit of purple and green to yellow but you can also use grey to create white rope or string instead of this brown one and I just finish off the rope with a bow and while I wait for that part of the painting to dry I continue to paint all of the stems and once the base color of the rope is dry I go back to it and I first mix yellow, purple and black to create a darker brown which I will use to layer on for shadows of the string or the rope and once I'm done, I'm going to finish off the whole painting with some loose leaves. I place them quite close to the bouquet to suggest that we've captured the leaves as they're falling off the stems. And that's pretty much it. This is the finished painting. But before I go, I want to just remind you again of my latest Skillshare class for beginners where I will cover the basics of watercolor brush control for round brush because I feel like it's the go-to brush that all starters should have. The class is filled with exercises which you can download and paint along and repeat whenever you need to as either practice or warm up. I've also included two easy flower paintings at the end of the class so you can apply the techniques learned in the class to a project. If you're interested in this class but you've never been a member of Skillshare, I will leave my link in the description box for two months free membership. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video and hopefully learned something new and I'll see you again at the next one. Bye!